All right. I think we are live. Success. <laughs> Again. Um, yeah, that first one, sorry if I've lashed anybody. It was um, flawless. It was. <laughs> it's a different kind of a stream that we are doing, um, right. if that's the case. But yay. Hola, Twitch. Hi. Um, let's see if we can pull this up. Shout out to Ben Bateman um, hey, for ben. letting us know that we were streaming when. Right. And how good it was. Know. How amazing it was. <laughs> Gave us rave reviews. Five stars on Yelp. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Nothing but support. <laughs> Classic Ben. So, um, so today shall we? we are going Wait. to jump into yes. We shouldn't keep secret what our names are. Oh no! I feel like we Wait, we're not names. recording. We're not recording yet on the Garage Band. <laughs> we're gonna figure this out. I was saying hello to Twitch first, and then we were gonna go into the podcast. That's okay. what I was thinking. Right? Okay. <laughs> we got this. Yes. We're gonna make it work. We are. It's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, here we are. I'm going to move this so we can see the chat, ideally. I would love to see this thing here. And now I'm going to go to GarageBand because we're doing this all at once, you guys. Um, send us your questions, by the way, yes, if please. you tune in. Um, send us any questions that you may have. Today we are reviewing Chasing Unicorns, which is an Estonian film. Estonia. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about geography. We are. And uh, and some fun facts about Estonia. Yes. Mm, because I feel like, I well, I don't feel like it. I know I've never seen a movie from Estonia. You? Absolutely. Agreed. Right. I, I haven't. Um, this is the first one. And it's a great one to start off with if you haven't. So this is going to be fantastic. All right. So we're going to start recording. And um, thank you so much to everyone for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Everyone meaning us and Ben right now, but... <laughs> Thanks, <funny>. guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's okay. Enough. Okay. Gracias, Ben. Um, and make sure to watch Ben's show. If you're a movie fan, you know, he has an incredible, um, not only knowledge of all things film, oh. he, I think, is pretty much a preeminent expert in film trivia. Oh, wow. um, yeah, and has uh, reviewed... It's movie critic, you know, just like us, very professional. Right. <laughs> so much better than us. It's nice to have peers. <laughs> yeah, that you can mentor and help guide. <laughs> All right, you okay. guys. Um, apagas el ventilador, por cierto, I forgot. Está apagado. Oh, see, what is that so loud? Oh my gosh, I'm just, yep, great. I'm sure it's We're fine. Technical difficulties, we got this. All right. Um, All right, you guys. Tres. Dos. Uno. Acción. I was going to say cero. <laughs> anyway. I would on. have said cero. Hi, everyone. Hola, buenas tardes. I'm Cristina Ochoa. Y yo me llamo... I'm going to go by KG. KG. Oh, I we're am. not using Karen. We're not using Karen. No. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I understand. I, I feel In weird the zeitgeist right now, it, it it's feels weird. weird. Yeah, I understand. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another week of Subtitles. Uh, in Spanglish. In Spanglish. Yeah, because we kind of flip and flop a little bit, but it's good. Maybe you pick up some English. Maybe you pick up some Spanish. Yeah, I'm going to deliberately put more words like vocab in there for the audience to learn. Oh, nice. It'll all be slang and right. uh, with je. Yeah, I've got a I've got a je thing for, a je for thing. double L's for any of you that, that have taken high school Spanish and everybody knows the word for chicken. Pollo. Pollo. But I say pollo. Pollo. That's just the thing Which we do. in Spanish you kind of don't want to say because then it can get like in murky territory with that. Pollo. With pollo. Pollo. Oh, we got, yeah. Like, there's like a weird thing. People make up, like mix up vowels all the time. So I just, I would say stay away from certain vocabulary in Spanish if you're trying to like learn. There's a lot of opportunities it. to trip up. Yeah. Um, when it comes to different countries and whatever words they decide are mm -hmm. slang. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so... Um, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Do we have a movie tagline that we want to share with our um, audience? No, we do not. Okay, <laughs> moving on to our movie review. Yes. <laughs> the week. We are reviewing a 2019 uh, Estonian film called Chasing Unicorns, recommended to us by a wonderful, also fantastic actor, friend, listener, I hope, uh, of the podcast, Johan Urb. Yes. And he happens to be in this film Hilariously. performing brilliantly. Yeah. 
So he, he really is. Yeah. Um, so check it out. The movie is called Chasing Unicorns 2019. It's 108 minutes. And here is the breakdown of what the logline says. It says Chasing Unicorns follows a young startup entrepreneur, Oye, and a serial failure, Tonu, on their crazy ride from small town Estonia to Silicon Valley and back. So before you go thinking they're actually chasing unicorns and this is like a Game of Thrones or some sort of like <laughs> fantasy movie. Well, it it's would tie not... in with last week's movie review. So right. to be fair, you never know. It would, so but yes. in this case. Yes. Um, the For our purposes, for the purposes of this movie, what is a unicorn? It's a privately held startup that's valued at a billion dollars or more by mm-hmm. venture capitalists. And it just turns out that Estonia is actually an extremely digital society. Mm-hmm. So let me give you some fun facts about, about Estonia and how way ahead of the game it is. So in 2001, it created a a digital identity card and allows Uh all citizens to access everything from transportation to their medical records. In 2005, it became the first country in the world to allow citizens to vote online. Wow. Yeah. So they're extremely digital in a way that we haven't managed. I mean, we're we're struggling with... uh... (laughs) We're Mail not gonna in. We're not going to get into the politics of this. But anyway, yeah. so they're super on the on the ball. Yeah, and they also um, Skype is from yeah. Estonia. Another one called Taxify is right. So the premise behind the unicorn companies are you invest a lot of money up front, yeah. and they are free to fail. Uh, to a certain extent, because they have such backing and funding, because they are a billion dollars, angel investments or otherwise, are funded, and they can fail dramatically, learn really quickly, and ideally boom really quickly because of it. And I think it's it's the dream of having a unicorn doesn't seem all that unattainable when your population is only 1.3 million. Yeah. So they've already had several. It's like the startup capital of the world, and... Our leads are trying to ca- cash in on that or get a piece of that pie. Yeah. So one of the things uh, while researching this movie that I didn't know, yeah. um, because I wasn't filled in by our good friend, Johan, <laughs> <laughs> um, but is that this is actually based on real people yes. and true events. Right. And the director is actually a startup entrepreneur, super successful, Mm -hmm. um, you know, businessman, now turned director. And this story is kind of really based on a lot of his experiences and some of his fellow peers. Right. So he, you know, takes a lot of what he learned. And I'm blanking on the company right now that made him kind of like really, really successful. Well, here's another fun fact about it. If you have it. The the dog, at one point, there's a dog that plays the role of a startup's chief happiness officer yes and that dog does really do that job for a company called pipe drive so that dog is employed as a cho of an actual company okay that's good to know this one yeah so rain ranu is estonian tech entrepreneur and filmmaker Mm -hmm. um and i am looking up the company that he actually started oh, up. Find it. In the meantime, they shot the movie in the summer of 2018 in Estonia, mm-hmm. and they actually came out to California, woo-woo, yeah. um, Silicon Valley, and there are apparently some cameos. I just don't know who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some tech cameos that that are meaningful in some way if you know about that world, which I don't know enough. Yeah. But So um, one of the questions that they were asking him to a lot in some of the interviews that I saw are about his portrayal of actually these tech entrepreneurs, like the big companies versus the small startups Mm -hmm. and, you know, the entrepreneurs that are hustling and just trying to make it work. Um, And Fortumo, by the way, is the company. I just found it. Fortumo. Um, Yeah, Fortumo. And it's, I think it's a a mobile payment space is how they described it. Mm -hmm meaning not an app because this is pre-smartphones. Oh. So it started, yeah, before we had, you know, our entire life dependent on these little devices. But um, he was talking about, you know, his portrayal. And one of the things that he advocates a lot for is he mentors and he does look for young startup entrepreneurs who are trying to make it, who are hustling, who are, you know, starting out. And there is a vilification of these big companies because a lot of the time what they do is they just accumulate and accumulate and then take over. And unfortunately, that just leaves the poor, the ingenuity that these startup, you know, entrepreneurs have had kind of, they, it becomes prey, no? O sea, como la intemperie. It's just out there and available for... Right. And if anybody's seen Silicon Valley, 
right? Mm -hmm. It's just one lesson after another of all the things that can go wrong. Right. And um, in fact, a review I saw was giving this movie special props for showing how important it is to have proper legal counsel. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not very sexy, (laughs) but it's super necessary. So to any of you attorneys out there, you know, bravo, I guess. (laughs) Or, you know... Do your best. Find some little startup that you think is worthwhile and help them out. Because yeah. They really don't know what they're doing. So let's talk a little bit about some of the performances because I would love to touch base on this. Hmm. Um, Oye, who is a female young entrepreneur. Yeah, super she, well, smart. she stumbles into the tech mm-hmm. world, right? She, I, was she depressed about something? I forget now. She was like, basically trying, yeah, but she was trying really hard. She she cycles, as they do in a lot of the countries um, in kind of like the northern, eastern European um, areas. And she cycles a lot. So she was trying to come up with something to help protect cyclists. Um, ideally helmets and it was like one of those competitions sexy, right but yeah she was it was one of those competitions she, for startups where it's like you have 24 hours to come up with a great idea pitch it sell it yeah yeah so it was one of those and um you know she proves her worth she is paired up with tonu who has done this multiple times yes he isn't uh what do you call it an incurable optimist yes um, and a you successful know, failure. Oh, and it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it, but it's good because I, I also want to say as much as it's a rom-com feature mm-hmm. has, it has a lot of those same tropes, you know, they meet their antagonists at first, you know, you see them developing a relationship that is a little deeper. Um, but as much as it hits some of those very successfully, I would add, um, it also brings in these roles of tech entrepreneurs, women doing business, women being savvy about the business, being in the positions of power in a way that actually isn't tropey or archetypical. Right. Or I didn't see her. She's not a high powered exec who has no time for love. You know, it's not that. <laughs> she she definitely has. I'd say her general tone doesn't seem like aggressive or what Mm-mm. you might think of in, in somebody who's really trying to make it in tech. But she has moments. And I think that might be a little more realistic. Like most of us have ebbs and flows of confidence and all that sort of thing. And um, it is very much, too, about her experience as a woman in that boys club Mm -hmm. of tech because almost everyone you see that they approach, if not everybody entirely, they're all men. And she does get some indecent proposals. You want to put it that it's way. it's good. They have they have a couple of montages I think that are very effective mm. that I really enjoyed. Um, when you know they're pitching, when she's coming up with brainstorming ideas, when they're going to Silicon Valley, and then they're having like that round of you know investors that they need for the second round, and I th- they are very effective and at putting those very succinct messages in that I guess are very real. I am not. A Silicon Valley entrepreneur, but they seem like from the reviews that we've been able to also see from people in that world, that they are very accurate. Mm-hmm. They're nuanced. They have a lot of, uh, you know, kind of real, like you said, raw moments that are feedback that you would get going into any of these spaces. Right. You feel, we love this, incidental learning. Mm-hmm. I feel like I come out of this movie knowing a little bit more, more about that. And I'm a little more business savvy, un poquito yeah. más como mujer de negocio. Sí, más enterada. Sí, ay, enterada, qué buen, qué buena expresión. Mm-hmm. So Lisa Pulk, which is yes. the name of the actress, um, relatively unknown, uh, at least for us, of course, uh, internationally. Um, they do kind of speak in English in some parts of the movie, so it was very interesting for us to be able to see the level of pronunciation in English that these actors have, which of course is much higher than we would have of Estonian. Unfortunately, that's true. I know zero Estonian. Yeah. Um, I did learn that her character's name, Oye, Oye, is a, at least in one translation of Estonian, is flower. So now I know that word. There you go. Oh, and by the way, unicorn mm-hmm. is, doesn't, it sounds, it starts with a U. Hang on a second. <laughs> Where are we? Uksarvik. Uksarvik. So you can impress your friends by saying, Wow, that's a beautiful Uksarvik. Uksarvik. <laughs> say that's a unicorn. I love it. Yeah. Um, also, there's there's a real Tonu, which I guess is a very common name as well in the actors. Yeah, I want to say, is the co-writer of the movie Tonu? Let me see. I Let's feel, find out. Um, the our director definitely directed it. But yes, Ranu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Tonu is one of the producers. Oh, he's one of the producers. Yeah. There you go. So, um, also, 
I want to have a little tiny special nod that I want to make to Rachel Pringle, who is also has a cameo in um, the movie and plays, you know, kind of more of that executive role. She's stunning and anything she does, of course, but she also has like a little cameo there where I think it's really nice because the women in general in this film, it's not just Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also, you know, the women and, and secondary characters are all presented as incredibly competent. Yeah. You know, it's it's very much with the current zeitgeist internationally, I think, of presenting women in those positions. Right. Um, so that was also because there are very few female roles. So good job to Lisa and also to Rachel. They yeah. did a great job. Um what else? Oh, another thing I really loved mm. is not only did it show us both the city center of Estonia, but also the outskirts and kind right. of like a lot of the nat natural areas around it. Yeah. Um, it's a former Soviet part of the Soviet Republic. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. And they definitely had to uh, make some progress after that regime. Um, and oh boy, have they. Yes, they have. <laughs> um, I'm really impressed with them. By the way, they're also, they're just above Latvia and they're across the, is the Baltic Sea from Finland. Mm -hmm. And Finland, also a really big uh, tech company. What's the, what's the phone company that they have? Are they um, Nokia? Nokia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Remember your Nokia, like 3310, way back then? It was a big deal. We all had, yeah, that was a thing. Um, also, let's talk about really quickly, I wanted to say the cinematographer and Tamik, I thought very well executed, yeah. very well done. Um, also, people that I didn't know how evolved, I'm going to say, and it's a terrible word maybe to use, but how evolved the film industry in Tallinn was, right? So this is a company that clearly has been doing this for a while, and they know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Highly trained, highly skilled, technically, but we have yet to internationally adopt some of their outgoing products, so much right. so that this movie um, also is not easily available just to stream anywhere the way some other right. movies like No Te Lo Encuentras on like Amazon or you know right. Netflix They're is not readily available. They're to have like a ton of yeah uh, streaming opportunities. Yeah. But you can uh, look them up on Facebook. It's called uh, Chasing Unicorns slash Uksarvik. Uksarvik. And um, you can... Me imagino que eso es película, ¿no? ¿Será Uksarvik? Uksarvik? No, no, Unicornio. Ah, el Unicornio, claro. Yeah. Um, and you can reach out to them and teachers and students in particular, I think they're, they're uh, giving free um, access to the film. Yeah. As you a, can like a stream tool. it, but yeah. they, you have to ask for basically a link. You have to request a link. Right. So if you go to their Facebook, you can uh, click a link right. and then make a special request to see it. Yeah. Now, what else did we find especially about Estonian filmmaking? By the way, the team, that did this movie is actually getting together to do another movie. It's not a sequel, but it's the same kind of um, filmmakers and mm. stuff that are involved. There's a lot of production happening apparently in Estonia that we mm. are unaware of here. Um, things are opening up also, I think, post pandemic in Europe at a different rate than they are here in, in LA. So they, you know, they're getting back together and they're going to be doing another movie coming up soon. So we'll also have that to review. Uh, the production company's name, I think is California for California. Tallinn, yeah. Which is the capital city of Estonia. Mm -hmm. And, um, as far as tourism is concerned, a beautiful little city. I, I, haven't, I haven't been, I wanted uh, to. Yeah. Same. I mean, I only know from friends who've either been there from Johan or people who are from there. Um, and it always looks, it, it looks like a postcard. Perfect. Well, you know, it looks like a, a city that people are very proud of. Like, there's something to be said about people who are proud of their city, and this is clearly a love letter. It's an homage, even this film is, mm -hmm. to their city, to their culture, to the advancements that they're making. Um, that's something that is palpable, and it's really wonderful to see it. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe we all be as lucky to make projects that shine, like show, ooh, technical difficulties um that showcase our environment and the places that we love in this way because i now i'm twice as inclined to go visit estonia as i was before oh absolutely and by the way they have a very important scene scenes uh in the sauna yes and saunas are a huge part of kind of scandinavian eastern european culture right mm -hmm. these really cold countries and um it's also a networking possibility. It's socializing. It's not just kind of to escape the cold. 
And oh boy, do they have a good sauna <laughs> moment in this one. And by the way, just overall, lots of comedy throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we basically have, Johan is playing a guy named Tom Markins, Markusson, um, who is like a very successful entrepreneur at this point. And um, he has some really wonderful moments when, especially when they get, I think, to Silicon Valley and when yeah. they get to the conferences and stuff. And, and it's like amongst entrepreneurs and successful let's call it the Steve Jobs and Elon Musk's of the movie. Yeah. And uh, they have some moments and beats. And that's something that's difficult, I think, at times, because comedy, I think, is harder to translate. Yes. Like a joke, un chiste, that's like super funny in Spain, just doesn't quite translate. And I know this from experience because... Uh, Guess what? In Spain, I'm actually funny. <laughs> In English, not so much. We haven't been there together yet. So. Yeah, you have no I clue. Can't, I can't you can't vouch for that. She's right. I'm not. I'm not funny in either language. But who knows? Maybe in French or something. You're hilarious. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's my sense of humor. That's the key. Um, but um, no. But overall, oh. I think it's like a really fun. Oh God, I hate to say delightful, because that just sounds really. But it is. Yeah, well, what, there's not moving. a, none of those words are better than the other. Entertaining seems like it deprives it from a sense of uh, talent or whatever. It's like, it's, but, but it's pleasant and happy or, yeah. and, 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 or, yeah, entertaining and delightful. Yeah, it's like, it's got a good pace. Mm -hmm. You know, they're moving back and forth between Estonia and California. Things are happening. You see the, the, the company having highs and lows. There's some, there's like a little twist here mm -hmm. and there. Um, so th I, th I thought they did a really good job. Yeah. We were very happy with uh, kind of our experience watching it. At, you know, the, sometimes it's more homework for the podcast or for something. And in this case, it was just uh, like we would have wanted to do it anyway. So that was a really nice thing. Um, but yeah, we're going to take a two minute break and we're going to be right back after thanking our sponsors and we'll be back with the bathroom break and your questions of the week and our favorite aceptamos pulpo como animal de compañía yes pulpo yes <laughs> Um, and who is this? Barbara, hi. Um, hola, buenas. So exciting. Um, loving the setup. Oh, thank you so much. We are trying our best to look a professional on uh, Twitch. Does it look like film? <laughs> we do film, <laughs> film reviews. This yes. is a <laughs> professional, <Theater>. nothing else. <laughs> Even though, so now everything's digital, but we prefer this look. Yeah, because it would be we're old school classic like That's that. Right. <laughs> I like things that are highly flammable and really dangerous. <laughs> bueno, it keeps, yeah, but it keeps things it's exciting. Like, <laughs> like we could die. I don't know. Maybe. Fun fact is the backdrop is just as flammable as the <laughs> idea of film. <laughs> Great. So no candles on set. That's a rule. And one one day we'll review cinema Paradiso because this really does come into play. The dangers of filmmaking. Oh man, that movie, Karen's favorite movie. I love it. Absolute movie. favorite movie. So good. Um, in combination with soundtrack. So sorry. Yeah. Yes, in combination with soundtrack. It's it's overwhelmingly great. Oh my god. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so, so we're gonna go back to recording, um, and we're gonna go to the bathroom break. The review um, for the questions of the week and our pulpo and outro tres dos uno, uno. and we're back <laughs> so now you guys if you've listened to our podcast before you know we have a section that we like to call the bathroom break mm -hmm. um Ultimately, because it's such an insulting thing to say to anyone in the right. industry, you're the bathroom break. And uh, we kind of loved it. Yeah. It's too good to let go. Mm -hmm. As, as yeah. biting as it is, actually, that's the reason why. Yeah. So um, we want to acknowledge that also not all movies have what we will call a bathroom break, and we're still putting it in this in this category. Mm -hmm. um, 
and sometimes they're just going to be harder to, for us to find. I think we found shots that maybe we don't agree with necessarily and stuff. In this case, um, and I don't think it's because I'm biased, even though I am, mm. um, I don't quite recall having a bathroom break um, or a moment that I felt nothing was happening. So I will agree with the fact that the pace was exceptional um, for a movie that, you know, is is not a Hollywood formulated production, kind yeah. of production. Um, did you find that there were any moments that maybe felt... I'm trying to remember. Was the beach scene maybe a little bit long? There were moments that I come back to thinking they don't necessarily tell me that much about the characters themselves. Mm. I would have loved to see her character fleshed out in certain aspects a little bit more because there were moments where she felt a little passive. Yes. To right. me. She's not a huge talker. Right. Character. That's true. Um, but then in looking back on it, I actually thought about those scenes don't tell me that much about her, but they tell me a lot about the character dynamics, like the relationships, mm -hmm. because she's holding back and withholding. And he's the... And he's not. He's the happy puppy dog. Yeah. Or he's pushing. He's just kind of like, <gasps> you know, right. a bulldog whatever in a china sticks. shop or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So, um, you know, they still are just as informative and I can understand why the filmmakers, you know, have some of those scenes and maybe show her kind of restraining herself a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, she's... Her expression can also just be a little bit... Muted. Muted is a good word. Well, I think you have some very strong personalities. Mm. Uh, Tonu, the actor who plays uh, Tonu, his name is oh, Hendrik. Henrik. Yeah. Um, he's very expressive. He has very good comedic timing. You know, same thing with Johan and some of the other, like Rogelio, who plays Peter. Um, we have like these very expressive, very larger than life characters that are very accustomed to being the comedic beats. And she's playing the straight man. Yeah. Right. So I understand from an actor's perspective, she's probably like, I don't, she's not supposed to go there. But then in comparison, sometimes it maybe looks like, oh, right. you know, she didn't go there. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. She starts out as like an accountant at this mm -hmm. firm who immediately is kind of shut down by, by her then boss, I think, who just basically ignores her proposal and is a little bit l looking for something in life. Right. But this, that's what's so great about that other character is he's, he's a bit ridiculous, Donu is, but has some experience, so mm -hmm. he can help, and she's the one who's more grounded, yeah. right? Accountants. Yes. Grounded, usually. <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would trust I an accountant. accountant. Yeah, grounded. he's grounded. <laughs> yes, he's, a, he's a, a father and grandfather to many, and I feel like he's a pretty solid... That's a good energy to have he's in your accountant. He's a solid guy. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm talking, like, maybe to... My dad's more of a jock type, but somebody else's dad, because he is. Yeah. <laughs> That's the feeling I get. Anyway. Um, okay, so yeah. you guys, now we're going to move on to the questions of the week. Um, and then Bulpo, thank you for sending your questions. Again, you know, you can send them to us on Instagram, social mm -hmm. media, Twitch, which we're doing now live on Tuesday afternoons. And you can always email us and through the website. So thank you so much for doing that. Um. Okay, uh, just yeah. to bring up uh, one of the questions from, it was either last week or another one, but they said it wasn't really a question, like convince me to like subtitles. Mm -hmm. And at first, and at like, first I was offended because I thought it was the podcast. Right. <laughs> and then it was like, well, basically convince me to not hate reading Sub subtitles. Actual subtitles, yeah. what they meant. <laughs> And then I just stumbled upon this. It says change subtitles, uh, Netflix information. Mm -hmm. Tired of Netflix's signature yellow subtitles? You can choose among eight different text colors as well as a background color to place behind the text. The font and text size can also be adjusted. The options are available in the your account settings on the web version of Netflix. So there you go, guy. I forgot who you were, <laughs> but um, you can now adjust your subtitles and perhaps Seeing them in pink is more your style. I don't know if pink's one of the colors, but it right. says eight. So one of the eight different colors mm -hmm. and backgrounds and text sizes and fonts. So go nuts, people. I'm going to say I mm. think there's something to be said about that being a choice that's made for you. I would assume and hope that that's the case. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, someone who has seen the movie before should be the person to determine... 
You know what I mean? Like, like look, there's certain things that visually are just easier to see, right? If, if the, all the frames are very bright in color, you want to see something against the darker backdrop or you want to see a black, you know, dark font or a bright yellow is because it's a color that's rarely used in a lot of these shots. So it makes sense and it's bright and you can see it. Um, closed captioning has been doing it with a backdrop for forever. Yeah. Like, I, I understand the customization you know, tendencia, like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call that, but like the, the new direction that everything is customizable to your own liking. But at the same time, is that something you really want to do mid movie or is, some, is that something you want to wing ahead of time? You want to pick it to be a green and then you start watching Avatar and Pandora is green and all of a sudden you don't want to have to like go back. I don't know. It just feels like I would prefer mindless. I, I like my subtitles to feel unobtrusive. Mm -hmm. And I like them to feel uh, barely there. Right. I, well, we're used to whatever is given to us and then it becomes meaningless. Mm -hmm. Right. But I guess, you know, it's another customization possibility that people are into. Yeah. I, I guess there's it seems like not useless but look if there's a new standard where people for some reason are happier to read in a certain color maybe, maybe some people love subtitles in comic sans or they love it <laughs> Helvetica. in papyrus <laughs> if anybody knows that Saturday Night Live papyrus sketch oh my god what was it it's like a I like it's my subtitles tribal, in Morse code I want my subtitles in Morse code that's what I want oh my god that would be, um, be interesting to achieve. Yeah. Um, um, but anyway, for that, for that. Yeah. Good to know. Question, good to know. You can now customize. So. Yes. Hooray. Love and that. Let's see. Do we have another one here that we haven't touched on? Mm hmm. So I have a question hmm. from Elizabeth Began. Began? Ba Began? Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> She's like, how do you ladies feel about all the new measures coming in post covid I'm assuming she means for shooting, for shooting. not for airing. Um, I guess they're doing the best they can. But then again, I think I bet you every set's different. Well, yeah. I mean, I think some of the settings and some of the new measures that they're proposing in certain places is como bueno venga, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like some are having significant others and partners come in yes, and be put this. in a wig yeah. so that you can do a scene with them feeling comfortable. Yeah. at close proximity. I heard about that for um, soap operas. Yeah. Because I mean, that's like, you know, the output mm -hmm. is, is tremendous. It's enormous. And, and there's a lot of sexy time in soap operas. So. Which is probably going to change moving forward. Well, so as opposed to measures to just kind of tweak her question a little bit, the way it's affecting new projects, I think is also, you know, the measures are only going to matter if everything continues forward as it used to. But the thing is, that's what's changing, right? Well, yeah, so I, I think it started changing even pre-pandemic with the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement. There are oh. less scenes that are maybe closer proximity, intimate in nature. Mm -hmm. So I think that in that sense, that already started changing. You know, we have intimacy coordinators now on set, all that stuff. But when you're talking about, let's say, a different scene, um, it's less making out, but a fist fight. Right. Still, right. Yeah. It's still close proximity. You still have to interact with a bunch of people. You have to have a certain amount of safety. You have your stunt doubles, your stand ins, all that stuff. And you're looking at this to be shot in a way that I think moving forward, those scenes are going to be written in less and less or with more precaution moving forward because right. we can't help as an audience, but watch things and see them and instinctively go like, Ooh, uh, COVID. Right. Like yeah. uh, so the measures are going to change the output. Yeah, I think so. Because we respond different as an audience. We're probably going to see a lot of movies set in the desert or in the forest or in a bound yeah. abandoned town. <laughs> and people are going to be maybe much more conversational uh -huh. and not making out as much. No me toques. Like yeah. there's going to be a yeah. lot of like just, you know, implied. A lot of Victorian films where there's a lot yeah. of letter writing. Yes. And, and a lot of looks. Yeah. <laughs> when will I see Or very next? Demolition Man, you know, with like the three shells and like those weird helmets. Post-apocalyptus <laughs> land. Apocalyptus? Apocalyptus. <laughs> it's, it's like eucalyptus Lance but <laughs> right it's the future smells like eucalyptus already yes. <laughs> that one also didn't come out right eucalyptus 
<laughs> Guys, I had an espresso. I didn't have any alcohol. I don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway. We should do a drunk subtitles at, at some point. Um, see what Ooh. comes out. Oh, she's idea. thinking about it. Yeah. She's thinking about it. Yeah, she, she took that very seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but I'll see. I mean, I think that we're going to see things differently. Um, I think we're going to see less of certain things, maybe for the foreseeable future, meaning the next two years. There's probably going to be a lot less movies like um, Y Tu Mama También, and there's going to be a lot more, you know, maybe contact. Or not contact. What am I thinking? Gravity. Okay you know, more isolated storylines that reflect also some of the things that people are undergoing now and thinking about yeah. now. Right. Um, I mean, more on CGI, I guess, too. Mm -hmm. Well, there was also another measure, fun fact, that was talking about maybe putting green... I Alerts. <laughs> just, you know, we're just, Karen is very popular. Um, so that was talking about putting green masks on actors and CGIing their mouth. Oh, I'm sure that'll turn out perfectly. Yeah, like your mouth is a computer. <laughs> It'll be a Picasso. Well, look, maybe that'll like help like less Botox and whatever injections Guys, because it's over just, here. <laughs> it'll just be like, you know, the actress can come into post and just be like, can you just make my, can you put lipstick on me? Can you make my eye, like my lips bigger? Maybe there'll be less surgery because of it. I can um, imagine how tempting. Just fix it in post. Yeah. I want a bigger mouth. Yeah. But what does that do? I was just thinking about what that would do for intimate kissing scenes. Are you kissing with a mask? And then are they superimposing a kiss? Is that, I Man. mean, I don't know. Now we're getting into like murky territory with it. But yes. <laughs> How do we transition from this to pulpo? I Ay, madre know. mia. I don't know. <laughs> um, do we have, oh, by the way, it's a pulpo topic I've been wanting to touch on. Um, I don't know Let's if you do ever it. got around to, to seeing it, but there's a... Um, there is a Netflix series from Mexico called Club de Cuervos. I have not seen it. I know it is highly popular, but I have not seen it. It was uh, very aggressively pitched to me by Netflix over and over again every time I, 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 I got in there. Um, it translates really poorly into English as a club of crows. Um, but really, it's about a soccer team. It's about uh, uh, two si half siblings, a brother and sister. The sister is kind of the very... Um, business oriented, extremely dedicated to the soccer club. The other brother, the brother is basically the playboy who wants to party with all the players and loves the limelight and VIP boxes and all that. But his vision of the, of okay. the club is mm -hmm. basically Very different just the flashy the one, right? Mm -hmm. And sisters nuts and bolts. And their father dies to kick off the series. And then it becomes a massive not just tug of war, but a major showdowns between the two siblings. At times they're friendly, at times they're mm -hmm. not. It's a fantastic show. If you do speak Spanish, you might still need subtitles because it's one of those cases where it's a lot of slang. You know, they're fairly young. They're probably in their late 20s, early 30s, these siblings. So they're using a ton of slang. And um, you have characters from all over South America because there's a soccer team. So you've got a Brazilian, you've got an Argentine, and mm -hmm. all, like all over Mexico, they're different accents. It is nonstop jokes, hilarious content. And somehow or another, they figure out a way, every single episode, a lot like Silicon Valley to bring that up again, to, to bring you up and knock you down again. Okay. So, highly recommend Club de Cuervos, Club of Crows, whatever, uh -huh. um, on Netflix. Please watch. Oh, is that the, like, the, the actual show is the pulpo? Sorry, I was waiting that was for, it. like... Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those, like, it's, it's no, a I know, television I know. series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was waiting to see, like, what the the actual pulpo was, because you're like, well, here's the setup. No, it's just and me. Then... It's just me jockeying this okay. show. Okay, okay. Well, um, uh, I will have to check it out. There's there's so many well, shows that I have to check You know what? Much like in this movie, much like in Chasing Unicorns, you end up kind of learning a bit about the process of a startup and, and getting financing and, and, and the ups and downs of that. Same thing with this one. You end up learning so much about, like, how to... Uh, operate a soccer club uh -huh. about the brother, for example, mid season wanting to change the jerseys. Mm -hmm. And the sister's like, you can't do that. We've got contracts with different sponsors. We've got to then like what happens to the jerseys that are already out there waiting to be sold. Mm -hmm. How about the fans? Yeah. Like, how are we going to crank out another million uh, jerseys? Whose names are we getting on there? Do we have to renegotiate sponsorships? I'm like, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> right. You've What's a pulpo, by the way, some uh, people are asking. So that's something that maybe we should explain oh. a couple episodes back in, just because they keep right. coming up. A pulpo is an octopus. Yes. Hey, that's two animals. So now we know Uksarvik, 
Uksarvi is unicorn. So that's unicorn in Estonian. Estonian. Pulpo mm-hmm. is octopus. And we know Uye is flower in Estonian. So that's oh yeah, the third and word. means chicken. And oh my god, look at us! Guys, We're just like Duolingo. Quit Duolingo right now. Just listen to, to, to subtitle to the title of our show. So pulpo, um, we we use it because there is an old Spanish commercial for categories where you have to say the name of something starting with a certain letter and a guy is told to say um, pet like a household pet right. name and instead of saying perro which is dog which would be the obvious choice he ends up going with pulpo right it became a common expression in spain about aceptamos pulpo como animal de compañía which means we accept octopus as a household pet so that he wouldn't go. And it was like, it just became part of like the cultural, you know, conversation. And Karen and I really love it. We use it all the time when it's kind of like, you know, we whatever. Should, yeah, we were like, we should have a category where... It's like a catch-all. We can say, exactly. Where we can put in whatever we want. And I, because I like to bring up either a series that are from other countries that we're never going to review or it's television. Right. Or for whatever reason, you know, is not going to fit into our... Yeah, or some that are foreign but not subtitled, maybe because they're foreign but they're Scottish or they're in English, so it's it's Australia, etc. So that's what, yeah, that's that's what. Aceptamos pulpo como animal de compañía. Yeah, and we use it all the time when we're talking because it's kind of like okay, yeah, fine, whatever. Not technically, but whatever. Yeah, it's it's kind of that expression. It gets passes. We let it slide. That that's basically yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, Club de Cuervos which yeah. you also translated so again I mean oh my god crows point, yeah crows Cuervo. lots of animals yeah. um, so Club de Cuervos check that out mm-hmm. I'm gonna check it out I haven't seen it um, and also what is the demographic like in general if they're like in a soccer club are they kind of like hmm. early 20s or is this I don't know why I thought it was teenagers oh no yeah across the board it's all okay. you know um, anywhere from early 20s some of the like players 40s. are a little bit younger yeah to like 40s Great. but there's some older people mm-hmm. in town there um yeah, you won't be disappointed. Uh, just just to give you an idea, the father is having a heart attack, and the son starts uh, looking up a video on YouTube on how to do <laughs> resuscitation, <laughs> except that there's a commercial at the top of the video. So basically, his dad's on the floor dying. He's trying to get instructions on how to basically oh. <laughs> resuscitate. And he's got to wait through a commercial. It's, uh, it's genius. Oh, I was like, I if the rest this. of the series is like this, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in. And I did. And it's paid and off. It's paid off. Okay, yeah. we have to watch it. Um, we're also watching, if you haven't seen it yet, and send us your questions, we're also watching, which we'll, we will be reviewing soon enough coming oh, up, yes. um, which is Frontera Verde. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's right now. It's very tribal. It's very interesting. It's shot beautifully, right. and it's definitely transporting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, a Colombian, right? Was it a Colombian? Um, yeah, I think. So. I think it's yeah. a Colombian series. We're going to be reviewing it. If you haven't seen it, you know, let us. Uh... By the way, fantastic accent. I love a Colombian accent. Oh my gosh, that's the right? prettiest accent, isn't it? The most melodic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like softest, and they always say things like "mi reina." And you, oh. you know, they're just very just affectionate in the way that they speak. I would, I would liken it maybe to like, um, like, like a really soft Southern accent, like a, y'all come back now, you hear? Like yeah, that like sweetness. a soft, yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. Sweetie, honey um, sugar. So, yeah. uh, but let us know if you have any movies or shows that you want us to review yeah, for um, next time and that you suggest that have subtitles. I have a couple that um, we've gotten through Twitter and stuff. So go on our Instagram or go on our website or on Twitch and send us kind of like movies that you like that are subtitled because that's the whole point, right? Is getting the word of mouth kind of out there. If you want an authoritative movie critique uh, and movie review for Chasing Unicorns, aside from ours, which obviously should be your only source. What else do you need? Yes, clearly. You can check out, there is actually filmestonia.com had a really great um, review for Chasing Unicorns. And, um, you know, again, just send send us stuff because we we love interacting and we love hearing from you guys. And um, we will see you next week. Uh, I am Cristina Ochoa. KG. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in. (laughs) Ciao. And by the way, to our Twitch um, viewers, ahoy, hello. Um, We are no longer recording for the podcast, but we are still streaming, which is our favorite. Um, And we have Priscilla and we have Mist E. Ahoy. Hello. And Barbara and... 
you guys um it is a peru el pulpo oh my god yeah i can barely see it because like i my I, eyesight i don't know what the not... origin of a great is. show ladies oh thank you so much so just so you know if you are watching on our stream <laughs> and about the pulpo yeah um we will be streaming coming up very soon um our world of warcraft which is a new adventure that oh we boy. are yeah. undergoing um and mist oh okay sorry we'll say mist i like that name mist Ooh. um so yeah we uh, are gonna be streaming world of warcraft coming up next and karen is a what blood elf priest priest yeah correct mm -hmm. um i am a troll druid i'm not loving my outfit yet but i have to earn more like points or points to get cooler, guys were, to get cooler gear. We're just as authoritative on our World of Warcraft knowledge as we are in our foreign film knowledge. <laughs> yes. Um, By the and, way, Ahoy, yes. real quick. Warcraft. Yes. Up until now, um, I never thought about the origin of Ahoy. I just I know it's kind of a, for a nautical thing, right? Yeah. Pirates and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's a signal word used to call to a ship or boat. The word stems from the Middle English cry "hoy," a greeting derived from the Dutch. Hoy, H O I. In its early usage, ahoy was used as both an exclamation and a way to get someone's attention. Oh, wow. Okay. What do we say in Spanish? I actually don't know. ¿Qué diríamos en un barco? ¿Qué diríamos como ahoy? ¿Qué, qué sería en español? Yo no, no tengo palabra para eso. Sí, yo no hay palabra como a babor o a estribor, depending on what side of the right. boat you are, no, but I don't no. know. Maybe, maybe Priscilla or anyone there who can speak Spanish. Haven't played WoW in a decade. Missed, I know. And Magic stream, oh, we will be playing Magic. I will be streaming on Arena now that it's available for uh, Max. I haven't gotten around to doing that just yet because we have been obsessed with WoW, not going to lie. It's, it's it cool. It is just, it's, it's so, the yeah. whole immersive, like the world thing is just. Yeah. But, out of this world i'm so impressed but we will i know it's it's beautiful i get why it's the most played that game underground troll area or or grimoire or whatever it was or grimoire yeah or grimoire. yeah there was oh, a yeah. simpsons episode oh wait we what? haven't where mr burn um mr. Burn? says oh ahoy oi answers and he says ahoy oi oh i don't remember this ahoy 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 ahoy, ahoy. 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 Hoy, probably. Hoy. <laughs> that's not in Spanish. <laughs> right, fair enough. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, you guys, oh, so. And there's, real quick, if there's a Simpsons episode where it mentions Ahoy, there is the South amazing Park South Park episode. World of Warcraft World episode, of Warcraft. Which actually made me learn a little bit about World of Warcraft. Yeah. And then uh, I was like, am I going to really play this? Yes, we are. Yeah. Well, we're invested. Yes, we are. Send us all of your feedback for World of Warcraft. Yes. Send us all of your feedback for foreign films, uh, shows. Subtitled foreign films. Oh, send us those slash commands, like slash dance. Oh, that I don't was know fun. what else you can slash do. Slash funny was really fun. But the slash dance killed it. Yeah, yeah. We all danced and had a little dance thing. Yeah. So that'll be exciting. Um, and you guys will tune back in at 7 p.m. our time. So that's in like 45 yeah. minutes. We're going to take a minute. We're going to maybe have another coffee or something Probably. really quick. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. If you're on World of Warcraft and you have any kind of flying machine or whatever, Ooh, come magic see carpet, us. please come give us a ride. Because yes! that's the best. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Hasta luego. Okay. Muchísimas gracias. Chao, chao. See you guys in 45 minutes. Okay. Ciao. Oh, wait, I don't know how to stop. I know earlier I streamed and I was like half naked, so that was not great. Okay, have stop.